Hey guys, Joe Pye here with Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Thank you to everyone that continues to check in, leave comments, and subscribe. Very much appreciated. Today I'm going to take you off the manual stuff and uh, we're going to fire up this beast behind me because a lot of people have said, hey, let's uh, talk about that Fadal behind you. This is a 4020A CNC machining center. It's a four axis setup here, uh, currently set up for three axis, X, Y, and Z, and a rotation but the turntable, rotary table, whatever, is not plugged in yet. This machine does have rigid tap capability, which is awesome. It'll run a tap, reverse the spindle, it'll come right back out. You don't need a tapping head or anything. It's a fantastic machine. It's not a machine you want to make engine blocks on or anything, but if you've got a big cutter and it's nice and sharp and you've got your speeds and feeds right, it will perform for you all day. 21 tool automatic tool changer. Uh, there is no chip auger or anything. You actually got to get in there and dig it out. But I'm going to fire it up and show you something fun today. I had an opportunity to do a logo for a local business, and I'm going to just uh, give you a real speedy walkthrough on the whole process. And someday I'll dig into each step of that process as the feedback comes in, and there's things that you want to see, by all means comment, and that'll give me some type of matrix I can put together for the next video. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, guys, today's challenge is going to be to create a trajectory around this particular graphic and engrave it into the back of a piece of plexiglass in a mirror format so that it looks like it's floating in the glass. If you're watching this in the States, you might recognize this as a very similar to one of our NFL football teams, but it's also very similar to one of the local high schools to where I live. I did create the model and I did create the trajectory that runs through it. If you can see this little line right here, we're going to run this over to a CAM program and we're going to get an engraver to actually follow that line relatively easily, if I might say so. Okay, guys, the programming here is complete. It would take up a whole lot of time to show you exactly how that's done, but I can play the path for you, show you the simulation, and then we'll go out to the CNC and actually do it. You can see this little nifty right here, this cigarette looking thing. This is the defined cutter, and this is going to show me the tool path that the cutter is going to run, so I'll see if I can slow that way down for you and hit the go button. All these little dotted lines that you see are when the cutter lifts up and jumps like in between a pocket or in between a pocket and an inside feature. It won't run across the part if it has to get from A to B and there's something in the way. It will actually lift up and get out of the way. This is Pro Engineer Wildfire 4.0. And that is a cutter simulation. Once the path plays out, you have to export the code, actually create the code in what's called a post processor. And when you do that, you get a whole bunch of numbers that look like this. And that's an awful lot of numbers. And this is a single digit uh, line numbering. So there's 1135 lines of code to cut that horse. That's a bunch. We get the code from the machine here through the use of a USB flash drive and the flash drive is unloaded off the machine, off the computer, right here local to the monitor. And then we walk it out into the shop and plug it into a CalMotion reader and download it. It's very quick. This is the CalMotion USB uh, receiver. It goes into the RS-232 port in the back of the machine. And the reason I elected to get my code into this Fidal through a USB port was so that there's no RF interference uh, that could potentially be picked up going through a shielded or unshielded cable to come across the shop. 
since we have welding amplifiers here, it could scramble the code or corrupt the code, and you wouldn't know until the cutter made a bad move and you're halfway into your part. Real easy, plug and play. That's all it takes. This monitor will preview what the cutter is going to do. And you just look for any bad loops, open ends, and uh, this looks pretty good. Okay guys, the tools are set, the offsets are set, the coordinate systems are all dialed in. Let's push the button and see what happens. Okay guys, on the other side of this particular piece of plexiglass we have uh, quite an effect. So I'm going to set the camera down and peel it right in front of you and we can all get a good look at it together. Uh, of course the paper's going to stick. I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen, but I guess when the coolant gets to the paper, it's not pretty. I'll peel it, and I will be right back. Okay, guys, here we go. There it is. It's done from the back. It's about 30 thousandths of an inch deep. It is a double pass with a 90 degree cutter, quarter inch plexi. Gives a great effect. We can put it up against something dark so you can see it. There you go. I did another one with a single end ball end mill. Let's take a look at that one. This was done with a 140 diameter four flute carbide ball end mill. It's about 35 thousandths deep. Single pass. Also engraved from the back. So from the front it does appear to float in the plexi. Very cool effect. Alright, well that's pretty interesting. There's an awful lot of steps involved in going from a pencil sketch or somebody's mind to something right in your hand. I wish you could do the whole thing in 10 minutes like this video just showed, but there's a little more to it. And I got to give a shout out to one of the most talented programmers that I've ever had the pleasure to work with, Marcus Shea. He's local to the Cedar Park, Leander area, and he's always been there for me every time I needed uh, help or assistance or programming, engraving, trajectory milling. This man is a gifted CNC operator and probably one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet. So Mark, if you're watching, thank you, buddy. Appreciate all your past help. Uh, that's all I got for you for today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Leave me a comment. Leave me thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe if you haven't. Pass the word. Until I post another video, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.